to the sentencing judgment, they say, well, it's not really official uh, included. But, well, uh, we will see if we what is the role of the also chamber in that. What did the legal representatives? And we know the, the Rome Statute foresees the possibility to, for the victims to have a legal representative. Most of them, they will speak their own languages. Some of them, depending on their uh, educational level, they will speak French. And that's the reason why and they will not know any, any English or any, any law. They could not represent themselves. So that's the reason why the court um, and the court uh, it's very hot here. Yes, it is. Um, the court ha has the possibility for them to have legal representatives. So um, the legal representative representing all these victims, they confirmed the facts of the rape, and they they asserted that rape began as soon as they were abducted and continued throughout their stay. Often the abuses were greatest in the initial phases of their abduction and in the training camps where they were trained to become militia soldiers. So this was when they were, um, how do you say that, uh, in, interrogating uh, the, the victims. And so the only female judge in the chamber, Judge Odio Benito, that by chance is also from Costa Rica, mm -hmm. she, she, um, she is very sensitive to this kind of uh, Crimes. So she questioned, she interrogated the witness 16, and then uh, from the interrogation he uh, confirmed that out of here, being in the center for the first time, the trainers and other guards in the center took advantage of the situation and they would rape the recruits. So uh, in May 2009, the legal representatives filed a joint submission requesting the trial chamber to consider modifying the legal characteristics of the fact. I'm sorry I'm being a little legalistic, but this is important to know that there is a rule on the rules of procedure and evidence of the court, Rule 55. So they use Rule 55, which according to the, to the rule, they say that the chamber may change the legal characterization of the facts in its final decision on the merits based on the evidence presented before and during the trial. So they had the possibility to, uh, to change the legal characterization. And in the filing, the legal representatives argued that the evidence and witness testimony in the case could support additional charges of sexual slavery, of inhuman and cruel uh, treatment of recruits, including girl recruits, who were pregnant as a result of the rape. And the problem was that while the majority of uh, the members of the chamber found that Regulation 55 permitted the trial chamber to modify the legal characterization, the appeals chamber reversed the decision on procedural grounds. So at an early stage before the sentencing, the trial chamber accepted to enlarge the characterization, but of course the lawyers of Lubanga appealed. <coughs> they went to the appeal, and then in the appeal chamber it was refused. So finally, again, we have the conviction of uh, Thomas Lubanga. Uh -huh, we have this uh, conviction, and then it's only for these three uh, crimes. So again, what is the role of the international organizations, the NGOs, the CSOs? So I want to mention this because I think it's important. I know some of you uh, work at the international level, and it will be uh, just inviting you for the possibility to work with them together uh, in the Philippines or at international level to support the, um, the uh, a really uh, good um, how do you say that? project and participation for the reparations. So we, we have to call to the international community that we are at the face of reparations. And if we have included some of the crimes to be included in the sentencing judgment, at least we can uh, make them part of the reparation uh, case. So since 2008, based on documentation and analysis, several organizations 
had advocated that sexual violence is an integral component of each of the three crimes of Lubanga, uh, of which Lubanga was charged. So they called them these sexual related crimes as an integral component. So how can you, I mean, how can you in the world imagine that these girls will be recruited or enlisted or used without touching them? You know, I mean, even the the most illiterate person would know that they were so vulnerable and that they had a risk to be, to be victims of these crimes. So, uh, even the, the, the chamber had the position of the UN uh, special representative of the Secretary General on children in armed conflicts. She participated as an expert and she even presented a report. And she recognized Mrs. Komarashwami that um, these girls had multiple roles. They had to combat, they were scouting, they were portering, and in addition, they were uh, sexual slaves and they had forced marriage. I have a friend who, who wrote her PhD on this, what they call wives. Because in Africa, for them, when they are raped, when they are uh, you know, uh, obliged to, to be part of the, of the household, let's say, of a certain commander, they will be telling, I have been obliged to be a wife. So it's not that we will be married, but it's this idea of living together, of having these duties. So it's, you know, it's really already uh, something that is known for more than 10 years, that this is the way that uh, the girls who were uh, facing this uh, sexual violence. And then we have also the transfer for victims. Even the transfer for victims uh, recognize the prevalence of gender-based crimes against child soldiers in this first report, entitled First Report on Reparations in which it noted that sexual violence was perpetrated widely against child and boy soldiers during their conscription, enlistment, and war participation. So from the information that we had from the transfer for victims, over 40% of former child soldiers uh, were, uh, you know, were also victims for the, of this crime. Now I would like to go to the face of the quotations of the judgment and uh, to the sentencing judgment because the judgment has 600 and plus pages, 650, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then uh, the, the sentencing judgment is shorter and it really summarizes uh, their main uh, thoughts and uh, decisions. So in paragraph 37, the chamber will state that the crime of using children to participate actively in the hostilities involves exposing them to real dangers as potential targets. And they also recognize in paragraph 38 that um, the prohibition uh, to use child soldiers has as main goal the protection of the children in armed conflict and uh, directed uh, particularly to protect and secure their physical and psychological well-being. So they already recognize the main goal of the, of the protection. And then um, in the paragraph uh, 60 of the judgment, they, they state a uh, critic against the prosecution. Not only did the former prosecutor fail to apply to include sexual violence or sexual slavery at any stage during these proceedings, uh, but he actively opposed taking this step during the trial. So what, he, what they are saying is, okay, he opposed, but we are not going to have to make use of this uh, rule that allows us to enlarge the, the possibility to have other rules. So finally, in, uh, I would like to mention that paragraph 69 in the next, yes? that uh, they only uh, will be uh, sentencing uh, Rubanda. However, they stated, however, it remains necessary for the chamber to, to be satisfied 
beyond reasonable doubt that child soldiers under 15 were subjected to sexual violence and that this can be attributed to Mr. Lebanon. So they have the, we see here that it's really a procedural problem that brought the very, just these very crimes as the final decision. Because they say, yes, we have to see what is the relationship between the crimes committed and the one. And then finally, just I will go to, to the, another one, but you can understand the chamber arrives to mm -hmm. the conclusion. So the chamber arrives to the conclusion in paragraph 74. On the basis of the totality of the evidence introduced during the trial on this issue, the majority is unable to conclude that the sexual violence against the children who were recruited was sufficiently widespread that could be characterized as occurring in the ordinary course of the implementation of the common plan for which Mr. Lubanga is responsible. So that's the reason why they didn't really uh, arrive to have enough evidence to show that he gave the order for the commanders or other uh, colleagues to break or commit other sexual uh, crimes to their So I would like to mention this dissenting opinion of Judge Odio Benito. She, she made use to Article 21 of the Rome Statute, which, uh, which, shows, which states, let me see if someone can read it, 21.3. The application and interpretation of law pursuant to this article must be consistent with consistent with internationally recognized human rights and be without any adverse distinction founded on grounds such as gender as defined in Article 7, Paragraph 3, age, race, color, language, religion, or belief, political or other opinion, national, ethnic, and social origin, wealth, birth, or other status. So what we see, this is one of the, I would say, the main uh, successes of uh, human rights uh, groups is to incorporate Article 21 for the interpretation and to incorporate human rights as being part of the sources of law for the judges to, to interpret and to um, and to use their powers. The, 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 the I, open the It's noisy, but it's, we will open. But I, I will to need a ah, to have a ah, just in front. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So. So Judge Odio Benito, in her, um, in her opinion, characterized sexual violence as inherent. So she characterized it as being inherent in the use of child soldiers. She added that sexual violence is an intrinsic element of the criminal conduct who of use or participate at the beginning of killings. So she already stated this is incorporated already in the ground. Of an instinct or recruiting or using. So finally, uh, I would like to put the, the, the judgment into context. I, could, I would like to say that it's an historical moment, an international moment, because it's the first uh, uh, trial. On the, other side, on the other hand, I would say that uh, the, the judges were very concerned about respecting the procedural uh, concerns. They, um, that's the reason why they are going to, to um, from uh, the six years that the Vaga has been in, in, in deprived of the liberty, they are going uh, to um, lessen these six years that he has already been in, in jail. And then also reminds us as, uh, what is the responsibility vis a vis the international So for the future steps, um, in my opinion, 
the ICC trial proceeding should 